Now in Kenya, CNN can now report the finance minister's in custody after handing himself into the police. Henry Rotic was arrested on Monday on charges of corruption. It relates to the construction of two dams. He's due to appear in court on Tuesday. He faces charges alongside 27 other officials. He denies any wrongdoing. He did so back in March. The arrest of a sitting minister is unprecedented in a country notorious for corruption. After all, last year, the Kenyan president told me he's committed to cracking down on the issue. We have really pushed. We have worked and we've worked with various agencies across the world who have been very supportive to our investigative and our prosecutorial uh, uh, um, bodies. And that's why we're saying where the ball squarely lies today and where I and the majority of Kenyans are looking forward to is the judiciary now. Elaine is with me in uh, Johannesburg. Elaine Jokos, our correspondent there. Is this arrest um, and this corruption investigation, is this as a result of Kenya's crackdown on corruption? Well, one would hope that it is, Richard, but actually the Auditor General for a very long time has actually been talking about corruption within government, corruption in the procurement process, corruption with regards to patronage. And in fact, this investigation has been going on for a very long time. So one is hoping that, yes, in fact, this is part of the corruption crackdown. But there's also, many say, a political game that might be playing out here as well. Remember that this government has built itself on the fact that it's going for big ticket infrastructure projects. And a lot of these projects, um, in terms of what they've been paying for, very expensive prices coming through, many saying who are signing these off. So this is not new. It's surprising that it's coming at this time. And remember, this is a finance minister that has been very trusted. He's been the man that has been taking the investment story out to the rest of the world. He's been dealing with the IMF. He's been dealing with various other bodies. And here you've got a sitting finance minister, Richard, currently in police custody. Uh, what happens next? Because these dams and these infrastructure projects, Kenya's made a huge yeah. deal about the fact, particularly using Chinese money uh, in many cases, yeah. or Chinese investment to rebuild the infrastructure of the country. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, in terms of those Chinese projects, of course, in terms of the price tag, many are questioning, you know, how did people even come to those numbers? And then when you look at these two infrastructure projects, these two dams, it relates to an Italian company. And we're right. talking about a company that was undergoing voluntary liquidation at the time when it actually got the project uh, and, it got, of course, got sign-off. But we're talking about 27 people here, Richard, that were implicated. You're talking about yeah. corruption that occurred from the very top to the very bottom as well. And the judiciary is going to be important here in terms of its independence. So let's look. South Africa, where you are, is in the midst of, of course, uh, yeah. major investigations on state capture. Kenya, the third largest, arguably, economy there, has this particular one. Nigeria has numerous investigations. Are, the, uh, yeah. are, are, these, are these evidence of the situation getting worse or... African governments finally cleaning up their act. You know, Richard, when I saw uh, that soundbite from uh, the Kenyan president saying we're going to clean up, guess what? We've been hearing this from every single African leader. We want to clean up. We heard it from Nigeria. We're hearing it from South Africa as well. But what is it really going to take? You've got to get these people in a court. You've got to get people to be held accountable and you've got to see people jailed. Right now, we actually haven't seen anything like that happening in South Africa, in Nigeria, and even in the likes of Kenya. So, yes, they're talking the talk. They're saying that they want accountability. But we actually haven't seen that happening as yet. And and sadly here, Richard, it's, of course, the people in these countries that suffer the most because they don't get to benefit from the economic right. prosperity in these economies.